Hello grade 11s, in today's video we're going to quickly look at the difference between intermolecular forces and intramolecular forces, also known as interatomic forces. These words and these terminologies can be very, very, very confusing, so I'm going to help you understand the difference between these terms. It's very important for you to be able to move forward with videos in the playlist. Let's go. When it comes to molecules and atoms, they are different forces that exist either between the atoms within a molecule or between the molecules themselves. And that's what this video is going to look at very briefly, the difference between intramolecular forces and intermolecular forces. It's vital that you know the difference in order to accurately answer exam questions. So let's have a look. Before we discuss this in terms of chemistry, intramolecular, intermolecular, I want you to understand the difference between the prefixes. Very, very simple. Intra, the word intra means within. Okay, so I want you to think within, I want you to think inside. Okay, that's intra. Inter means between. Okay, and we all know what between is between two things. Knowing that can help you know the difference between inter and intramolecular forces. So let's take a look at that difference more carefully. Now remember, Intra means within. So intramolecular means within the molecule. So within the molecule. So think about a molecule like HCl. An intramolecular force would be this force over here, this one over here. It is within the molecule. Now, you should be thinking, hmm, but don't we call an intramolecular force that thing that is it within the molecule, inside the molecule? Don't we call that a bond? Yes, we do. Intramolecular forces are also called bonds. And another word for them is interatomic forces. Interatomic forces. And how does that make sense? Remember, inter means between and atomic means atoms. So between atoms. This exists between atoms. So the word intramolecular bond and interatomic all mean the same thing. And we get three types of intramolecular forces that you need to know. Number one is our ionic bonding. Ionic bonding. Remember, bonds are intramolecular forces. Ionic, we get covalent, which is the one that we're focusing on mostly in this chapter. And we also get metallic, which is something we dealt with in grade 10. We're not going to look at it again this year. Covalent is the main one that we're looking at this year. They're all bonds, intramolecular, interatomic. But then what is intermolecular? Now remember the word inter means between. So intermolecular means between molecules. So for example, if I have an HCl molecule over here, and then I have another HCl molecule over here, these things are attracted to each other. All molecules have a form of attraction to other molecules. So if you have a water molecule and a water molecule, there will be an attractive force that exists between those. And it's because of the charge distribution around the molecules. Remember, positives and negatives, opposite charges, attract. Like charges, repel. So these are the forces, the attractive forces that exist between molecules. So if I have an HCl and an HCl, that dotted line represents the attractive forces between the HCl molecules. And take, a, take note of how this is between the molecules. This is one molecule over here. This is another molecule over here. This dotted line is between molecules. It's an intermolecular force. Now, intramolecular forces, the bonds, are stronger than intermolecular forces. But intermolecular forces, this is the stuff that determines the physical properties of a substance. So it's boiling point. It's melting point. It's vapor pressure. It's solubility. It's the intermolecular forces that determine if one substance can dissolve in another substance. It is the stuff that determines why water has a higher boiling point than alcohol, for example. It's the intermolecular forces, super, super important. So if you take a look at this diagram again, I hope that gives a little bit more clarity. Intermolecular attraction between molecules. Intramolecular attraction, that is the bond that is within, intra, within the molecule, okay, also called interatomic. And I hope you can see this diagram, this little picture, actually gives a little bit of insight as to why 
there's intermolecular attraction here. Why are these two molecules, this is a molecule and this is a molecule, why are they attracting each other? Well, it's basically based on the polarity of the molecule. So if the molecule is polar or nonpolar, that has to do with charge distribution. So if you've watched the previous videos in this playlist, you should know that this is a polar molecule. This side is partially negative or slightly negative, and this side is slightly positive. The reason why is because of their difference in electronegativity. If you compare the electronegativities of chlorine and hydrogen, chlorine has an electronegativity of 3 and hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1. Because chlorine is more electronegative, these numbers com come from the periodic table, chlorine is more electronegative, it pulls this shared pair of electrons closer to it. So I did show in my previous video, they're sharing a pair of electrons like this. I'm not drawing in the lone pairs here, but because chlorine is more negative, technically the shared pair of electrons lies closer to chlorine, making this side of the molecule more negative, partially negative, and this side of the molecule partially positive. The same thing happens with this HCl molecule. And then, because opposite charges attract, this is a negative over here, and this is a positive over here. Opposite charges attract, these two molecules attract one another. And that is where the intermolecular forces come from. This is something I mentioned, intermolecular forces, so the ones between molecules, are weaker than intramolecular forces, bonds are stronger. That means that we need a lot more energy to overcome bonds. We actually say that we break bonds but we overcome intermolecular forces. This is very important terminology. So please say we break a bond, so we can break an intramolecular force, but we overcome or we weaken an intermolecular force. So here are some notes about bonds or intramolecular forces. And here are the three types that I mentioned. And when it comes to intermolecular forces, so again, the dotted line between the compounds, we get a wide range of intermolecular forces that you need to know. You can see a few listed over here. We've got dipole-dipole listed over here. We've got hydrogen bonding listed over here. And we've also got London forces over here. In the next video, I will be going over all the different types of intermolecular forces. This is a very brief summary behind me, but it is very important that you understand why some are called iron dipole, why some are called dipole-dipole. And that will be dealt with in the next video. So if you've missed any of my chemistry, check out the links in the description box below. You need to know the intermolecular forces for your practical exams in order to answer questions about physical properties like boiling point, melting point, all of those things. So I can't wait to see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.